Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time being here, my name is David and on this channel we like to talk about all things WordPress, especially using the Elementor page builder. We'll also look into like Bricks Builder, Generate Press, and any other builder we think might be worth checking out. If you have any requests or any comments, please leave them in the comment section and we'll try to get to those requests. And let's get to it. In a previous video, we looked at how to create a two column layout where one column was remaining within the box width area while the other column extends to the edge of this viewport. And it was a huge success. Lots of people liked the video. And then within the comment section, someone asked, what if they want to make a new layout where the boxed area will be like 40% and then the image will extend to about 60% of the screen or the other way around, it could be 60% for the content area and then the image will be 40% of the screen. Even in the Elemental Advanced group, people also ask the same question. So I decided to, to look into it and create a video about it. So in this video, that's what we'll be checking out and we'll be looking at how to create this layout. You can see the image extends to the edge of the screen and it takes up about 60% of 70% of the content width while the text takes up the rest of the, the content width. As you can see, I, I use the, the bar below shows you the, the width. So this is the content area and this is 70%, 30%, but this extends to the edge of the screen. So let's see how it's done. So before we go into the design, let's get a little bit of background knowledge. So here we are, I've pulled up my whiteboard. So now imagine we have a screen which is 100% viewport width. And then within this screen, we want to have our content area, which in Elementor we have as default to be 1140 pixels. Now within this content area, we want to have two things, we want two columns. So the first, column will be extended to the edge of the screen which will contain our image and the second column will take the content the text and that one will be 60 percent of the viewport of the content area so that's 60 percent so whatever is left here would be 40 percent plus whatever is at the edge of the screen so let's represent that as an x if we look at the drawing right now, we know that the center is 1140 pixels. Therefore, the edges will be equal, will be X and X because it has a, a margin of auto for left and right. In order to center the content area, the left and the right have equal area. So we we'll represent that as X. We should also not forget that between the image and the text, there's a bit of gap. Well, let's add some gap. So this is the gap. So now, now that we have this drawing, we can now start with the calculations. So the first thing we want to do is we we'll say that the content area is equal to 1140 pixels. The gap we present it as just gap. We, we, we know the value, so we use that in the formula. And then we know that for the boxed area, it will have a value of 60% of the content area minus the gap in between. So that is 60% of 1140 pixels minus the gap, which you can just represent as 0 0.6 multiplied by 1140 pixels minus the value of the gap. We'll be using custom variables to represent all these values so that if anything changes, we don't have to rewrite any of those values. So for the stretched area, so just a stretch area, it will be 40% of the content area minus the gap plus whatever is X. So that's 40% of 1140 pixels minus the gap plus X. And if we look back at the diagram, we can see we know the total width is 100% and we know the content area is 1140 pixels. So 
X will just simply be 100% minus 1140 pixels divided by 2. That's So that's X. X is 100% of the viewport width minus 1140 pixels divided by 2. We can now replace back into the formula. So stretched area will now be equal to 40% of 1140 pixels minus the gap then plus 100% minus 1140 pixels divided by 2. And basically this is the formula that we're going to be using. So now we can go into design. Let's see how it's done. So here we are on our WordPress dashboard. Moving on, we'll only be using the new Flexbox containers and the grid containers. We'll no longer be using the old sections and columns for our tutorials because now that it's getting into the stable status, there's no need to continue with the old sections and columns. So ensure that under Elementor, Settings, and then Features, that you have the Flexbox container active. I've also activated the grid container because I'll be showing you how to create that layout using both Flexbox and grid. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned and let's get into it. Here we have a new page in Elementor. The first thing we want to do is to create our two column layout. So we'll click on the plus icon. We we'll first start with the flex box. So we'll click on the flex and then create the two column layout. So we'll start with the closest one, which is the 50-50. Uh, first thing we want to do on the parent container, under advanced, let's change the pattern to zero. And then maybe we'll just give it some top and bottom margin. Let's give it the top margin of maybe 20 pixels. For this design, I'm using pixels, although most times I, I have some custom variables set up already. So if you guys can see if I have, I just start to do a var. But I'll be mostly using pixels just for testing purposes. Uh, now that we have this initial container, let's change the width to 70% for the left column and 30% for the right column. Then we also, on the parent container, we'll give it some gap. Let's make it 20 pixel gap. And let's put, let's put some color, because this is going to be like our test design to show that our calculation is actually working. So let's just give it some random colors. But you might be wondering why we set up the the two columns, one to be 70% and the other 30%, and it had a gap in between, but it didn't wrap to the next line. The reason is that on the parent container, by default, we have it set to no wrap. That's why it, it doesn't break into the new line, because on a normal day, 70 plus 30 is already 100%. So anything above 100% is supposed to wrap to the new line. Like you can see here, with, when you set it to wrap, it goes to the new line because it is it, the, there's a gap of of 20 pixels. So, but when we change it to no wrap, it remains in between. And that's why now we can check out the design. You can see that at the moment it's boxed. There's the 70% and the 30%. But now, now let's now create a new container. We just duplicate this one to make it easy. Within this one, we want this green container to extend to the edge of the screen while the purple remains boxed. We, what we're going to be doing is we'll just add a class name to the parent container. We'll add the custom variables to the width values of the two containers. The, per the child containers and then we'll add in our CSS. So on the parent container, what you want to do is go over to advanced. Under CSS classes, we're just going to give it a class name of DD mixed layout. That's it. We'll also add an attribute because depending on which one is bigger, if the stretched width is bigger than the uh, boxed width, we have a different formula. So we will be using data attributes to add into the formula. So we say data call width. No, data call 
higher, whichever one is higher, we're trying to find out which one is higher. For this uh, example, the stretched width will be higher because this is 70%. So we'll say stretch. That if the boxed width was maybe 60%, then we'll change this to boxed. But since the stretched width, the one that's going to be stretched to the edge of the screen is bigger, so we'll set it as stretch. And finally, all we have to do is add in our custom CSS. So we'll go over to custom CSS, we'll go and copy our code. Don't worry, the code will be in the description below that you can use. We'll just copy the code and then we'll add it under our custom CSS. Now, for now, nothing happens. It remains the same. There's no difference. But next, what we want to do is to change the width values for each of them. So under the layout, we we'll come over to the child containers. So let's expand our navigation. Let's go to the child container. For the left child container, which is the stretched width, we we'll go over to the width value, change it from percentage to the plus icon because we're going to be using custom variables. So all you have to do is say var dd call double hyphen boxed. No, that's stretched for this. The first one is the stretch, so say stretch. The second one, click on it. Change the width to the plus icon. Say var dd call double hyphen, say boxed. And yeah, that's basically it. So now we just have to change the value. So we'll go back to our parent container. Let's click it from the navigation panel. Go over to advance, back to the custom CSS. Now we can see, this is the variables we used. You can see at the bottom there is a DD call boxed and DD call stretch. So basically this is the width the formula is what we did in the calculations in the beginning of the video. So these are the calculations we use. We just used, we replaced them with custom variables. So now we have the boxed percentage will be 30%. That's the width of the purple area. The gap, we set it to 20 pixels, which is what we set in our container. And the rest will be left equal. Finally, we have to go over to the parent container, change it. Layout from boxed width to full width. If not, it will still remain boxed. So now we save it and now we can preview it and see. From our preview, you can look, see it's literally the same. This is one is boxed, but with the formula is now stretching to the edge of the screen and the other one remains boxed. Now that we have the basics, we can now expand it to design the layouts because this is the layout we're trying to achieve. Uh, with there's an image, there's some content, and there is some text at the edge. So let's get back to the other one. Over here, the first thing we want to do is get rid of all the colors. So let's go to the container and then get rid of the color. Go to the next container and get rid of the color. Next, we'll want to add in our image. So let's Go over to the Elements panel and drag in an image. Pick the Im this image. So ideally, we want to get an image that is of the right proportion. But for this example, I'm just going to use custom CSS to to adjust the aspect ratio. But first, let me get rid of the padding from the container. So let's go to padding on the main container and set it to zero. So now it, it extends to the edge. So now back to the image. Let's go over to style. The width, let's set it to 100% so it fills the entire space. Then I'll go over to advanced and do some CSS. So just say selector. I'll make the aspect ratio to be 4 by 3. Object fit. Let's see, so it should cover. Right now it's centered, that's why the head is being cut off. So let's make it align to the top. So see object position to be zero in the center and then the top. 
Let's save that. The next thing we want to do now is adding our text into the other column. So let's go over to our elements panel again and drag in a text widget. I like working in the text, so we'll switch over to the text tab. And first thing we have to do is go over, let's see what this is in our design. It says essential wardrobe. Let's copy that and then make that our H1 because that seems to be the main heading. So H1 class goes to So sometimes the misconception people have is that the biggest text is supposed to be the H1, but that may not be always be the case. Sometimes it might be a small text, but that is the main heading that controls the, the page. So is look at what is the main topic within the page. For this one, we're just going to be saying that, okay, it's the essential wardrobe that's the main heading. So we'll make that the H1. This will be a paragraph and a paragraph, and this will be a button. So. Let's go back to our design. So H1, this will be a paragraph. Let's copy the so it's outfit issue. Then we'll be using some semantic HTML, so we'll wrap it into a, an age group. I like adding class names to everything within the text area because the tiny MC used by Elementor has a way of trying to filter every paragraph or break tag. So once the paragraph doesn't have a class name, it deletes the paragraph. That's why I'm adding a class name to the paragraph. So now. The final part is to add another paragraph, which will be our, let's just say description and just copy the text and paste it here and then we'll close the paragraph. You might be wondering, oh, the design doesn't look nice, but We'll be using custom CSS to style it back to normal. So under custom CSS, we we'll start with selector dot dd your subhead. We could make that give it a font size. I'll be using some CSS variables, but you can use whatever you like. Imran from Web Squadron has already shown how to create some clamp functions so we can just wrap that in some some custom variables so that's what i'll be using here so var dd uh, font size should be maybe uh, medium then the main should have a font size of let's say extra large and we'll give it the font weight of 700 yeah and yeah and that's it you can save this you can center it so on the main column we can just go over to the layout since it's going downward we can say the justify content to be centered and save. So now when we preview it, you can see our design. It has the image stretched to the full screen and the text within the boxed area. And one thing I also like to do whenever I have this kind of design is to make sure that the body text, because if you go back to the web page and then you go back down, you see text the image doesn't go past this all my screen always doesn't go past one 
1920 pixels. So I always constrain the entire body to 1920 pixels so that on very large screens, it doesn't look weird. The images doesn't extend continuously to the edge. So although we do is we say it's full width, but it's still a good idea to have some form of constraint because otherwise it will be so large that it will be so weird. So that's how we can get this is by simply going over to any part of our custom CSS. Literally on, I usually put it in the body area on the site settings. So all you have to do is say body in brackets, say width equal to main 100% comma 19 pixels, 1920 pixels, then margin left auto, margin right auto. And that's it. That's what gives you that constraint value. You can set it to a bigger value, but let it not be too big so that it doesn't continuously extend to the edge of the screen and then it starts to look very weird. So then, I promised I was going to show you how to do it also with the grid because this is with flex. So now uh, let's see how we can do it using grid. First, I want to create a new layout, but rather than using the flex box, this time I'm going to be using the grid. I will create a two column grid. The grid is very powerful for making very complex layouts because you don't have to set the width like with the Flexbox, we have to come over to the width for each of the child containers and try to change the width. But with the grid, we can do everything from the parent container, So, which we're, what we're going to be doing. So the first thing we're going to do is, we're on the parent container, change it from boxed width to full width. Then we want to do the same thing whereby we're going to go under advanced, the CSS classes, give it the same name dd mixed layout there's no difference between the flex and the grid for the formula and the same thing we'll do the attributes will exactly the same so data call higher and we'll, the higher one is going to be the stretched width so those are the two things we're going to do the custom css normally we're going to we're supposed to paste the custom css but since it's already in our Flexbox container, I'm not going to do that again. Uh, all we have to do now is go under the layout of the parent container. And now we're just going to use those, reference those CSS variables we referenced for the width of the Flexbox containers. So let's go over here where it says columns, change it from FR, fractional units, to the plus icon, the custom unit. Then we're just going to start referencing those variables. So VAR, double hyphen dd call the first one was the stretched width and then var dd call the other one is the boxed width finally we're going to say the rest of the space let's just give it a 1fr and the gap we're going to say 20 pixels you can also use that variable where we set the so rather than saying 20 pixels we can just come over and change it to var dd boxed gap which was set up here so rather than having to manually write the value so we can all change everything from one location under the sorry it's the it is the this design so under the custom CSS, you can see we set it a variable of boxed gap to 20 pixels. So rather than saying 20 pixels all over over and over again, we can just use a custom variable. So then that basically is the same thing. So we can copy the image to show that everything is the same. Paste the image in there. Copy the text and paste the text in there. Same thing here. We just say the layout on the container, make it uh, the align items to center, save. And when you look at it, uh, preview it in the front end. This is using the flex and this is using the grid. Basically, 
is the same thing. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like, share, and you know, spread the word to all your friends. And if you think it has been helpful, please, 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 please drop a like. It will really help me out. Thank you.